Having trouble winning games in Madden 24? Oh my god! Whether you can't score on offense. No! No! Or can't stop anyone on defense. This is the video for you. Help me! Help me! So if you want to see 12 tips, tricks, and cheats that will help you win more games, stick around after the intro. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor at MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. In today's video, I'll be going over tips that will help you win more games, starting with before the game even starts. If you want to win more games more consistently, you will need to be more consistent in your approach and minimize everything down as much as possible into an easily repeatable system and master it. And this starts with the teams you choose, the playbooks you use, and even the formation you use in that playbook. Master one team, one playbook, one formation, and you will see much better results. I always go back to the Bruce Lee quote that says, I don't fear a man who practices 10,000 kicks one time. I fear a man who practices one kick 10,000 times. It's the same idea. The plays that I'll be using in today's video can once again be found in my brand new San Francisco 49ers offensive ebook and my Las Vegas Raiders defensive ebooks. If you guys want more help, you can instantly download these or any of my ebooks simply by clicking links in the description or the top pinned comment. The next tip starts at kickoff. A lot of these tips might seem small, but football is a game of inches, and that's because the little things matter. Most games are decided by accumulation of small details that add up to big results. I receive the ball in the opening kickoff and I have two options. Take the touchback which will most likely start me with better field position or return it and sacrifice field position for something that is more important to me which is getting to a hash mark. As starting every play on the wide hash mark is much more important than a few yards as I'd rather have a few more yards to the sideline than a few yards closer to the end zone. And the reason for this is simple. To create offense by definition is to create space. And I'll pretty much be working my entire offense to the wide side of the field for most of every drive while making sure that I end every play in a way that gives me control of the hash marks for the entire drive. Another reason for being on a hash mark is it literally changes how defenses play. It will change how deep zones react to certain plays opening up certain one play touchdowns and even how the defense aligns before the play. As certain defenses like cover three and cover one will change their alignment based off of the formation that you're in on offense as well as where you are on the field. The offense I'm going to be using throughout the entire gameplay today is from my iForm close game but I'm mostly going to be be focusing on the tips in today's video but i already made several videos about the offense and defense that i'll be using in today's video so if you guys want to learn more i will have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video so stick around for that for my next tip if you're going to run the ball use a lot of tight ends tight ends are better blockers but this is actually more to do with offsetting the ai's read and react defense which is a new feature that was added to madden 24 where the defense would learn and react to run plays that were run more than one time but like most things that ea adds to the game it was overpowered so they changed the requirement in a recent update so that the defense will need to have as many linemen and linebackers as the offense has linemen and tight ends to be activated meaning if i have eight linemen and tight ends on the field and my opponent comes out in a base three four or four three defense they will only have seven and this overpowered feature will be turned off so if you're going to run just make sure that your offense has more of these positions on the field than the defense does and running will be a lot easier and if you think tight ends at wide receiver is cheap or cheesy, there's actually a package that you can select in this formation that puts tight ends at wide receiver, so it's in the game that way. On the first play, I run it to the wide side because this obviously gives me more space to the boundary, but I will also use my tight end and receiver as a lead blocker by motioning him across the formation, as you can gain a lot of advantages by using motion on just about every single play. The goal of the motion on this run play is that you always want to have outside leverage on the widest box defender so that you can get around them. As you can see how easily I run to the outside with a wall of blockers like this, as all I have to do is sprint to all the space that I created by running my offense from a hash mark before I run out of bounds. Now, the sideline can be your enemy on offense, but it can also be your ally, as I will use it to my advantage to protect my ball carrier from fumbles by running to the sideline before I get tackled on every single play that I can. This is because if my running back fumbles, it won't matter, because it will most likely go out of bounds also. And if you watch my gameplays, ask yourself, how often do you see me fumble or lose a fumble? If the answer is never, this is why. A lot of people might try to make a highlight reel run here, but my goal is to play it safe and control the game by controlling the ball. You can even go as far as to set your ball carry to conservative in your coaching adjustments, and it will all but turn fumbling off. But it will also turn off things like jukes, so to me it's only worthwhile if you're going to be running with a quarterback, as they are programmed to fumble way more often. Now I know I said I want to create 
create space and use the wide side of the field, but you also have to stay unpredictable. And that sometimes means breaking the rules. If I just run my offense to the wide side over and over and over, it will get predictable and my opponent will eventually make adjustments to try to stop it, giving them a huge advantage. So on the second play, I flip the play, make no motions at all this time and run to the short side of the field for another big play. My opponent has had a packed eight man box this entire drive, but I am still averaging over 16 yards of carry because of fundamentals and misdirection. The first play I motioned a tight end and ran to the wide side. And on the second play, I didn't motion anyone at all and ran to the short side. So on the next play, I decided to give him a familiar look by making that tight end motion once again and making him think that I'm running the same setup from the first play. But since he's in man coverage, the cornerback also follows across and I run to the wide side of the field as there's no one out here to contain the edge. And I keep my average of a first down on every carry going. I have a lot of good pass plays in this offense also, but why would I use them if you can't stop what I'm doing? It may look like I'm running the same play over and over and over, but in reality, I ran three different variations of the exact same play and my opponent still has no idea what I'm doing. So I will do it until my opponent stops it before he earns the ability to see my next play on offense. My next tip is about fatigue. Is this going to make your offense less effective as your running back will now be slower and it can actually cause your running back to fumble more often if he gets too tired. There are stamina cheats like calling a timeout or rotating through the formations to a point where the players actually get their stamina back, but I just put in my backup running back for a play to give him a breather and I get my worst carry of the drive of six yards before putting Swift back in. Things get tighter in the red zone though as there's no longer deep field to cover on defense and I am now noticing that my opponent has changed into what looks like a double safety blitz which will make running the ball much more difficult. I could be stubborn and try to run anyways but I don't want to waste it down and you always have to take what defense gives you. And I also want to make sure I stay on schedule and get to at least and short situations like third and short or fourth and short as this will help to keep me unpredictable the entire drive as you can really do anything from those distances. I get a penalty on the next play for making too many adjustments and now I feel passing is the best option so I call one of my best man zero blitz passing plays and you can see how confused my opponent is as he is still expecting a run play and just stands around covering nothing while watching and absorbing my latest play before I try to run the space on the next play and my opponent makes an adjustment to make sure that his edge defender starts to play outside my tight end to control the edge once again but he only made that adjustment because he saw that setup earlier in the drive he hasn't seen an inside run yet though so I switched to that to get a little bit closer but to be honest I was only running outside because his defense had very little opportunity on the inside since he was coming out in packed boxes and you always have to take what the defense gives you so I run one play inside to remind him that that is an option before going back to the stretch run one more time on a critical third and goal only this time I make no motions at all which he hasn't seen yet no tells on where the ball is going and we fall forward for the score when kicking off I find it's best to use the sideline in my favor and try to pin them deep in a corner as this at least gives them very little options for a return as they can only really go in one direction or they have to loop around the entire field on defense I'm going to do all the same things I did on offense just in reverse as I'm going to use the same defense and the same coaching adjustments that I always use and I'm going to be aware of the same offensive strategy that I use to predict what my opponent is going to do. I pinch my defensive line and I spread my linebacker so that I always have outside edge containment. Then I use the linebacker on the short side of the field and I move him towards the center of the field so that I'm parallel with the running back as I expect him to run to the wide side. And this will help me get more defenders to that side faster. He passes on the next play, but look at what side of the field he passes on. It's simple math. There's more field on this side, so the probability of the play occurring on this is higher as well. If 60% of the field is here, there's a 60% chance that the play will also be. And playing defense is always about playing the percentages since you don't know what your opponent is going to do if i play 60 percent probability all game i have a 60 percent chance of winning every play and over time that adds up to winning the game i'm also going to call my plays like i'm the one on offense by switching my plays and giving different looks on the first play i was in a soft zone with no real pressure so on the next play i'm going to do the exact opposite in a man-based heavy pressure approach and we almost get the sack on third and five, I do it again, and he hits the running back on the weak side for the first down, as I probably got too predictable by running the same play twice in a row. But you have to try that sometimes. It's just like on offense. You have to run a play until your opponent shows that they can beat it. And now that he did, I will move on to another play, which is a mix of both. I have pressure and I have off zone. And since this is a new look, we get a sack this time and probably should have gotten the ball. On the next play, he hikes the ball before I can man line and it results in a big play in another first down as he hurries me up and catches me in another adjustment as I try to change defenses. And Madden does some wacky shit sometimes, so less adjustments is more. What side of the field is larger is a good pre-snap indicator of where the play will be, but the location of the receiver's pre-snap is also. Since he's running trip sets and this defense doesn't cover that too well, I switch to the cover three once again, but I make sure that all of my zones are on the three wide receiver side. He does have a running back and a tight end on the wide side, but he has six 
60% of his receivers on this side of the field. For the play to occur on the other side, these receivers would most likely have to cross the field, which takes time. And I'm sending a blitz in hopes to shorten that to a quick throw. And that's exactly what happens as we get an interception. On offense, I'm playing a pretty smart opponent who has now seen and learned quite a bit about what I'm trying to do. But truthfully, I could have kept running the ball all game. I started passing because when I record these gameplays, I do it in a way that I'm trying to show an entire offense or defense to you guys. So a lot of times I'll force plays for the purpose of the video, which is something that you don't have to worry about. But I force a pass play and it gets me behind schedule to a second and long, ultimately derailing the drive as I try to run the next play and get shut down before throwing an incomplete pass and deciding to punt it away. Fundamentals are key and even though most Madden players don't want to ever punt, converting a 4th and 15 is not good odds and winning the game is all about playing the percentages once again. And if I were to turn the ball over on downs here, I almost guarantee my opponent points. So I play the percentages and punt it away, only to see my opponent make a huge mistake. In real life football and in Madden, you're supposed to let a punt go once it goes inside the 8 yard line. But my opponent's lack of sound fundamentals just cost him the ball. As the punt hits him at the 1 yard line before the animation to recover carries him into the end zone, and now that I know I have to sprint to get to him before he gets out for potential safety. I know a lot of people say that Madden isn't real football, but having an understanding of the rules really does help sometimes as we get the ball right back and extend our lead to two possessions before we get a good return and start the next drive at midfield already and all because i made a series of smart decisions starting by punting the ball away from here i go back to running the ball not because it was working but because of the clock as most games are won and lost because someone ran out of time i might have played a little too conservatively though as i don't even get a first down but i can afford to do this because i'm up Taking chances is something that the team that is down has to do, because taking chances by definition is something that has a higher probability of failure than success, and we continue to play the higher percentages. So on 4th and 3, I decide to kick a field goal to extend my lead, despite the fact that this field goal seems pretty risky, but since I use the same team all the time like I mentioned earlier, I know exactly what my kicker can and can't do. Now I already went over several indicators to predict what your opponent is likely to do, like which side of the field is larger, or which side of the field has more receivers, but there are other important indicators that come into play as the game carries on, like the scoreboard and the clock. With my opponent down two scores with over a minute left before half, he has to try to score, which means running the ball is much less likely. He gets to a third and one however, and this changes things a bit since he has all of his timeouts, making running for the first down a viable option. And since he calls a three tight end set, I pack the box and call my best run defense in the cover four quarters, expecting the run before he drops back and passes for the first. You can never see what play your opponent calls, but you always have these indicators that you can see at all times. In the scoreboard, the game clock, the down and distance, the amount of timeouts they have, and the formation that they are in. As all five of these indicators can help you more accurately predict the next play as they create the situation that your opponent needs to win. If he was up in the game, he'd most likely be running at this point, as it's really that simple. He tries to run again on the next play, and that really wasn't a smart play at all as he is now running clock and he gained no yards, making passing on the next play much more likely. So I send the blitz and get the sack before he gets to a fourth and four in the next play and calls a hurry up instead of calling a timeout, costing him a lot of runoff time. He calls a timeout after that, but it's too late as his poor situational awareness and time management just cost him a field goal at least as I give up a big play but it doesn't matter because I was just playing prevent to keep him out of the end zone. He gets the ball in the second half and I get him to a fourth and long from his own side of the field before I make a fundamental mistake by not covering the running back and you can now see the consequences of fundamental mistakes as I give up a score and let him right back into the game. Mistakes happen, you're not going to shut everyone out but the goal is just to limit your mistakes as much as possible to win more games. On offense I am up so I'm going to play with the lead as all I need to do is get to the end of this game so I slowly and methodically run my offense knowing that a simple field goal will put me up eight and increase my win probability dramatically and even if I don't he still needs a touchdown which hasn't come easy for him so far so I kill as much clock as I can while not taking too many chances that could hurt me before he gets the stop with three minutes left and I kick a field goal without even thinking twice good luck trying to get in the end zone twice buddy our defensive philosophy is now just to protect the end zone but if I have the opportunity to end the drive I will take it but I'm not going to do it at all if it risks giving up a touchdown. Since my philosophy has changed, so is my play calling. Early in the game, I mentioned the importance of switching up your play calling, and I still want to do that. But I will mostly call plays with deep coverage in mind, as I don't want to give up any big plays. He has plenty of time, though, so he plays smart and takes the routes underneath. So I decide to give him a new look, and he scrambles instead. But I'm still letting him kill the clock on himself, which is really the only goal. Before I get him to a third and long, and he has to take a chance as we end the game. So that's, that's the video. If you guys want to see more about the offenses and defenses I was using in today's gameplay, Play. I'll have them popping up on screen. And other than that, until next time, thanks for watching, man. Mike's it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.